That voice belongs to the Berkeley County uh, Commission President Jim Whitaker. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. And uh, Gary Wine as well. Gary. Good morning. The county administrator. So do you remember Morgana the Kissing Bandit from the 70s? Oh, my gosh. She would run out of the field. <laughs> yep, yep. And she would run around. And she was known for her appearance. Uh, she was well endowed, so to speak. And she would run onto the field and she would kiss baseball players. I don't know if you remember her or not, but she was... The 70s Vaguely, had a lot yeah. of weird stuff, like, like well, streaking stri- was big streaking, in the Yeah, that was all, all she about was, it. She was clothed, but yeah. she would just run onto the field and then kiss a baseball player and then leave. Mm-hmm. Morgana the Kissing Bandit, she was called. Well, nowadays, they probably just keep her out on the field for more entertainment. So. Maybe. Yeah. Or she would be <laughs> yeah, well. cuffed and taken Take off. off. Yeah. You know, you know, a whole nother to do right there. Uh, yesterday, we and, and tomorrow we'll continue it as well, but we spoke yesterday in regards to the Jefferson County budget. And tomorrow, Paul Shamajdi from the Jefferson County Council will be on. Uh, today, we're looking at the Berkeley County budget because it's that time of the year. It is. Uh, so uh, when do you folks finalize this and, and get ready to present it? Uh, so it's yeah. it's been adopted. They did that last week. So... Uh, they're comfortable with the revenues that they've projected. Mm-hmm. And what's our total number? Well, so I think probably the first, the first and most important thing is is that the current levy rate at uh, 13.39 that the county commission did not raise the levy rate, so they're living within their means with regard to where the levy rate set. That levy rate will generate $51,044,496. So about fifty-one and a half million. Correct, mm-hmm. and uh, that is nine hundred to forty-four thousand one hundred and thirty dollars greater than last year. Just about a million. Just about a million. Okay, and that that all came from assessments. That all came from assessment increases. Correct. Okay, yeah. what other sources of income does the county have? So probably right around five million dollars in grant revenue. Um, we work really hard at at going after that. That funds a lot of or most of the day report efforts and things of that nature. Um, there is fees and such for planning and engineering that totals probably about two and a half million uh and then everything else just gets smaller and smaller and smaller but the the greatly the the larger portion of everything is property tax revenue and is all that revenue you just described included in this 51 million dollar budget there's nothing hidden that that is the number that's it and unlike the federal government they have to the county commission has to have a balanced budget so they are balanced at that um and it was a challenge do you get, uh, or will you get coal severance extraction money this year? We do. I think to date we've received about $260,000 of coal severance funds, so we try not to get crazy with that money. But Count on it, yeah. They, historically, mm-hmm. they've used that for a capital, small capital projects here or there, or outside agency funding. And what is the fiscal health of Berkeley County at this time? I think it's pretty strong. I mean, we were very conservative in our uh, projected revenues, um, which uh, leads to possibly um, having us a little bit of a surplus at the end of the year. But we always need that carryover uh, until probably end of August, first of September to uh, meet payroll and things like that. So it's uh, it's a it's a good balancing act. um, But we we try to be as conservative as we can. During the uh, crisis of 2008-2009, when the economy had a a serious challenge at the uh, national level. It's certainly filtered down locally. And I can remember hearing something about the county's rainy day fund being about $17 or something like that, Jim. Um, uh, you may remember that. Uh, uh, I remember it. Uh, it was about $3.18, $0.20. $3.20. $3. 20 yeah. what, what is it today? Seven, Seven point two. Two, Seven point two million. Seven point two million dollars, and and th- did that build again during this past fiscal year, or is it, it steady? Only interest this year. They have yeah. not contributed to they will not be able to contribute to it this year okay and is that considered a healthy rainy day fund for a county this size it is uh it can be no greater than 30 percent uh of the budget of the total budget, budget. but it, yeah i mean they've not had to touch it i mean that money's um jim has been on the commission the entire time since they've built it to where it is today he's he's been a leader in that process so uh there have been years that they could put Two, three hundred thousand in it. It's been years they put a million in it. It's uh, been years they put none. This is one of those years where they're not going to be able to contribute to quote unquote their savings account. Are you obligated if you have a surplus to put a certain percentage in a ready day fund? You're not. No. You're not. That that really comes into play with bond ratings uh, when we're looking to borrow money and things like that. Uh, when when the bonding agencies come in and really assess the financial stability of the organization, that's one of the things they look for. And uh, we have a, a, a great bond rating. 
Is it as high as it could be? Can it, you still improve? I believe there's one more step higher. It's as high as it's ever been. Uh, it hasn't went down. Um, we're comfortable with it, and let's knock on wood that we don't have any reason to have to sell any bonds or borrow any money for the next four or five years. Right. We were uh, through Moody's uh, assessments. I think we're uh, a a plus if I'm or, or a. It's double A. Double A. Okay. This. Uh, legislative session impact fees were passed and I know specifically to Berkeley County you had a lobbying group down there that was working hard and the Eastern Panhandle delegation to get this passed as well tell me if you have any idea what kind of an impact no pun intended those fees will have on the upcoming budgets you know a direct impact I'm, I'm not sure at this point um, I do know that it'll be we're going to uh, have a lot of education to ourselves to make sure that what we charge an impact fee for is what we can charge an impact fee for so i think we're right now the the preliminary is is for new growth uh to help sustain you know the uh, the need that we have in our um limping infrastructure but you know when a subdivision's put in usually the developer installs all the the piping the roads and all that and then it's turned over to the county the maintenance part of it then is what the what the county has to maintain so you know we're looking to impact, you know, or use the impact fee possibly for public safety, um, first responders, things like that to uh, to enhance what we already have. Your budget is $51 million. What amount of that goes to the Berkeley County school system? None. None. That that's average. all money you keep. That's yes. correct. I got you. Okay. Mr. Gilstrap. It's like 80, I think it's 82 cents or so on, off the, of dollar. Every, on the dollar. And this is what this part this is, is what's, what's left this over. Is, yeah, this is the... Uh, the, the um, 18 cents that's left over on the tax dollar. Understood. <clears throat> I, public safety w was going to be the target for the sales tax if that went through. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So the impact fees would sort of double for the sales tax or take over the what we were hoping to get for a sales tax or what you were hoping to get for sales tax? It'll it'll do a portion, but, you know, we I, I'm – skeptical of really relying on a, a sole impact fee to to enhance it uh, greatly uh, because what if we have non-growth years and that we don't have you know new construction and we don't have those those funds coming in like we would like we're doing now i think that to just to get in it's just a bit deeper john the impact fees are, are revenues that can't be banked on so the vision for capital improvements for public safety uh, contributions for like to parks and recreation for quality of life and things like that the impact fees don't do for the county commission what the one percent sales tax does where they absolutely said to everyone they would do their best to commit if not all the greater portion of it to public safety salaries and such so those are those are huge numbers and huge demands and has the check for the opioid settlement or the berkeley county share hit the bank 3.6 million and is that part of the budget that is not part of the budget why not well so that money has strings attached to it for what you can and can't use it for um, the county commission hasn't decided exactly what's the best place and how to use it. They're committed, as you well know, to the opioid issues and so on and so forth. And right now, I think just that budget alone probably teeters on around $4 million. I mentioned earlier the grants that come for it. Uh, they have all kind of agencies that have been involved from uh, Boys and Girls Club, CCAP. There's, lo there's lots of people, CASA. They've all asked for portions of that money. I do not believe, and I don't want to speak for all of them, but that money, there's no intent to roll that into their operating budget no, at all. Not in my tent. No. So what is the plan? How is that going to be apportioned? Well, I know that they can use it for anything relative to the opioid effort. Right. It's it, very few guardrails at the county level for that money. Correct. Uh, I can tell you this, that the county commission sold $10 million worth of revenue bonds to construct an addition to the day reporting that's going on right now, that they have a debt service of about 800000 a year. Uh, there's been discussion of using that money to help offset that debt service. Um, they can also reimburse themselves for regional jail costs in, in a certain period. So um, I think they're taking baby steps to really make sure that what they decide to do with it is is the right thing. Where I live, out you know, out by the river, we still don't have cable. And the are there plans 
What what is the the infrastructure broadband internet stuff? It was it was kind of hot for a while, and then it kind of disappeared. Is, it's hot. Is it hot it's now? It's still hot. So what is the plan? So the initial plan and commitment from the county commission was they divided two pieces west and east of North Mountain. They were awarded a project of eighteen million dollars, of which they partnered with Frontier. That project is in design, and, and I just sent an email earlier this week for an update. It has legs. It is moving. All the contracts are signed and done. Two days ago, the West Virginia Development Office on their broadband side released a, a, a statement that the bead funding for new projects are there, and that's why I sent an email. As soon as we know everything's moving ahead, we will advertise and find a partner and work east of North Mountain, and that will put 100% of Berkeley County uh, with broadband. Time frame? It op- so I can tell you when BEAD opened the first time we applied, it was about 18 months until we were awarded. Uh, it's been about six months since they signed the contract with no motion for construction just yet. So that's all I can offer is what we know. Okay. Now we're talking about $7.2 million in a rainy day fund. We talk about we got a state rainy day fund. What is a rainy day? For them, uh, a turn in the economy. Uh, they can't make payroll. Uh, a large capital project that they don't want to fund with bonds. Um, it, it could be anything, it, 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 anything catastrophic that would impact them where they need to write a check greater than the cash they have in the bank. How great is the temptation to use that, and what are the guardrails on using it, Gary? Well, there, there are no guardrails. It, it applies to any expenditure within their, their normal transactions, they can get it. Um, the guardrail is reminding and remembering what your bond rating would be if it weren't where it is today. So if they start to lean on their savings account to operate their normal budget, when it comes time, j- just for an example, they have, a, they have a, a growth issue in the court system. And if you know anything about the courts in the state, um, it's an unfunded mandate to the county commissions to make space for the courts. The courts are growing rapidly. We we have a ju- we have three judges coming January one that we don't have room for. We're working on a small renovation for one of the historic buildings, the old jail, mm-hmm. that will give us and buy us some time to probably twenty twenty nine. At that point, plus it's efficient, right? You have the courtroom and the jail same place. Yes, nice, right? So that <laughs> right project, down the steps there, Johnny. <laughs> that project is twenty million dollars. Um, they'll have to go back out for bonds to facilitate that. So. I don't want to, I hate to say it this way, but there are so many things thrown at county governments in West Virginia that are unfunded, that they don't have the ability. That's why they were really strong. They pushed really hard for the 1% sales tax. They have no method to create additional revenue. Uh, have you thought about selling naming rights, like the John Gilstrap prison? Have you thought about yeah. the John Gilstrap mm-hmm. courthouse? Sure. Got a checkbook? <laughs> it's got a couple of them. Yeah. You got that kind of money. You just can't have one checkbook. It's got to spill over. I thought you were one. paying me for the right to use my name. I I, I, mis, I misunderstood this. No, 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 no. no. You no. got the relationship. Oh, oh, okay. Gary, can you take us through the pie chart of the budget and where it's going to go? Sure. I can tell you. Jim, do you want to run down? Well, uh, you can probably uh, refresh my memory on a couple of them. Uh, like I said, total budget request uh, with without personnel was $50,106,000. You go on down to outside agencies request were uh, two point nine, almost three million, and the total request was fifty three million ninety eight thousand and some change. Um, employee request we had uh, five additional deputies uh, with outfitting, uh, two additional circuit clerks, one additional uh, court martial, and the total personnel request was one point one million dollars. Now we didn't didn't go down that road on any of those uh, personnel requests as far as you know increasing just because of the, the, the budget and the, and the shape that it was in. But uh, the total requested with personnel was $54 million. And again, Gary, related to, you know, what our current year budget project, we were at, uh, was at the 51044. Mm-hmm. So uh, going down through everything, all elected officials were funded, flat funded with their request. Um, then it comes to the outside agencies, you know, to – to make sure that you know we can try to make them whole we 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 had very small pie piece of that pie to to divvy up to them but we we tried our best to to be as fair as we could and as equi- equitable as we could and so, when you say an outside agency would that be someone like amy serba yes. children's home society mm-hmm. yes right yep. uh the outside agencies yeah it would be um children's home casa um, airport airport authority senior center um transit authority transit authority and all those agencies. It's, it's important. So in that, 
the very first thing that they always do, and I got to tell you, the five people that sit in those seats, I wouldn't want to sit there, is they look at their own budgets and they say, okay, we're going we're going to suffer first. So they reduced their operating costs by 1.5 million. So the original deficit was 3.1 million. They dug in, slashed as much as they could. They reduced 1.5. The difference in the other one and a half was they reduced outside agency funding and so on and so forth. So they're balanced not funding any requests for personnel, reduce some outside agency funding, but they made it. It's balanced. Uh, it's a good, solid budget. Uh, and I believe probably in the next fiscal year, um, it will be more solid with regard to demand and hopefully be able to get the outside agencies back where they were. And again, when we start doing our uh, revenue projections, we remain conservative just in case that, uh, you know, the turn would happen that, you know, the, the permitting fees don't come in. The, um, the request for um, bunt or um, grant money doesn't come in, so we're, we're we're trying to be as frugal as we can and and uh, and keep the burden off of the taxpayers the best we can. Jim, everybody when they run for office says I'm going to cut waste, fraud, and abuse and such. You've been around a while now. Can you think of any items where you've been able to improve efficiencies to cut costs? To cut costs, uh, actually, you know, through the IT department has has been able to. Uh, um, enhance all of the uh, the abilities that the county has whether it be through the first responders public safety i mean just, that was just one item we have um uh, oh gosh gary let me community think. corrections Com commu yeah so talk about regional jail costs we, yeah we have shaved the regional jail cost i think when i first came on we were almost four million dollars a year for regional jail maybe a little bit less Right now, we are, I think two point three, two point three this year. As a part of that is uh, the day report, day report center has. Indeed. So it has been um, almost um, the cost savings that we've had from the regional jails all you know, all but paid for everything we've done on community corrections. You know, I, I can remember maybe eight ten years ago doing an interview with Doug Copenhaver, who was the president of the council. Then he started talking about building up the day report center. And he said he projected a million dollars in savings. And I don't know that too many people believed him when he projected that because I do remember he got some grief for that number. It was a big number right. to project. And it's still a big number. But you're telling me that's actually happened. It did. And it's remarkable on how it happened. Um, I was, I, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due. I was lucky enough to be on that, uh, that commission at that time. And, and the, um, I was skeptical myself about how it was going to you know play out and the money that we were going to save but uh you know this is this is when you follow the president and you uh you see you know what his vision did and what it was able to do and we get to to uh, have the the fruits of that effort so projected regional regional jail cost today would be around seven million dollars if not for if not for the effort of community corrections and the vision of the county council then led by doug copenhaver so the savings is actually in excess of $4 million. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Doug was way under. You, are you paying a lobbyist uh, again next year? And what will that cost be? Uh, the cost, well, it's we have a five, 216000 216 And we have a, um, uh, uh, it's, it's for two more out years? We just renewed it. You'll be three, three out, out years. Three out years on So that. is that 216 over three years or 216 a year for three years? A year. A year for three All years. All right. So you get some criticism for that, too. Are you getting your yeah. money's worth on the $216,000 a year? Yes, we are. I mean, you know, when it comes to uh, getting the legislation pushed through, that uh, that is very vital to the Eastern Panhandle in, in, in our county. Um, Summer and her group have, uh, have actually – done their lion's share for us yes uh the exact numbers oh gosh uh i'm trying to think one in particular i mean they they fought hard and and, and as well as our elected officials fought hard for the uh, uh for the impact fee for mm -hmm. us and i wasn't sure it was going to make it through again i was skeptical and and uh you know but it made it through uh, across the finish line so i'm looking forward to that um the return uh with john hardy's bill when it come to um uh, the, the tax revenue uh, being brought back to the county transfer fees I transfer fees that has uh, has always um, been the, probably one of the biggest portions that uh, we were able to collect on to get it back here fast do you have a light item on that gary in we terms did. of the amount you collected do you know what oh, the, no. the number no, is no, sure. i don't have it and right now you're not at 100 percent yet of getting that money right no i think we have another year and a half we, we had 20 20 additional percent this 20, year 20 yeah okay, yeah and and you know, Summer Barrett and the effort of access strategies, I believe, is, is paramount to the, the legislative success. I mean, it's not her relationship with the county commission, but it's her relationship with our current legislators and her 
ability to build those relationships in Charleston. I mean, we had a, a $25 million uh, distribution to help the expansion of a water project that I'm telling you, she and Senator Blair and many others, I mean, I can't name them all, but without their help, we would have lost We would it. have never got it. Never got it. Is two sixteen the best price you can get? If you have you ever said, what can I get for one hundred and twenty five thousand? Right, and, and we advertised. This isn't out of the blue. We advertised for competitively, and it was the best price. And they've continued over and over again to prove that they're they can be successful for the commission. And the contract you have now goes for an additional three years it, it's, from this date? It, every year they renew it. With it has three additional out years. They do that in late September. I believe the contract date is October. Uh, what else? I've got about two minutes left. What else on this budget do you want to make sure people are aware of, Gary and Jim? Go ahead. I, I, I think just it's very important that the county commission did not raise the levy rate. Please focus on that. It's important that they're living within their means. Uh, every constitutional officer's request was funded, excluding personnel, uh, and they really worked hard to give the outside agencies what they asked for. Uh, and if your taxes are going up, that's because the value of your home is going up? Indeed. Correct. The yeah. only reason. And that's the sole reason why your taxes right. are going up. With regard to the portion of your tax bill that is their control. Remember, you still have the school board's effort and things like that. They have nothing to do with each other. But And you can only raise that. There's a cap on your increases that you can do. There is. The, the cap this year that they could have raised would have netted them about 190 additional $1,000. They, they live within their means and rolled back and did what they needed to do to not raise the taxes. How can our uh, listeners and viewers see this budget? On the county's website, berkeleywv.org, it will be posted there probably by end of week. Gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for coming in. And uh, the Dapper Duo, I think we could call you guys this Well, morning. today's my dress-up day. It is Thursday, so, I mean, we don't have a casual Thursday. Not all of us have Duquesne sweatshirts either. Uh, 1240 oh. today. Yeah. First tournament appearance in 47 <laughs> years. Make sure you're watching. Okay. Right? Will do. Make sure you're watching. Guys, thank you very much. You. I, I guess you got a meeting to get to. We do. Yes, yeah, we thanks do. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you all so much. Good morning.